When you're developing any kind of race car, a race seat is one of those aspects that's key to both driver safety as well as driver feel. But when it comes to selecting that race seat, there is a huge amount of information to take in and a huge amount of options on the market. We're here with David from Race Tech, manufacturer of Race Tech seats, and you'll find Race Tech seats in all kinds of professional level motorsport, including being fitted to Porsche as well as Aston Martin and McLaren, and in Australia, the seat fitted to the V8 supercars class. Uh, David, just talking about the seat selection, when an enthusiast is looking at maybe building a club level race car, it can be a little bit daunting knowing where to get started. And there's really two aspects as far as I'm concerned that we need to consider here. One is improving the ability to, to drive the car and control the car, feel what the car's doing, and the other's safety. So can you give us a little bit more information on those two areas? Okay, the, the first thing I'd like to say is I, I think it's really important you choose a a, uh, a merchant who you're going to buy the product from who's reputable. So don't don't buy stuff offline because firstly with a seat it's got to fit you so it's very hard to buy the right product online. Um, I'd, I'd really suggest that, that you get, find somebody local who you can go to and try things out. So the first thing about safety is really that you've got several parts of the body you need to look after. The head and the shoulder area is the most important because that's where all your vital, vital things like brain and stuff are. Um, so, But you need to support the body all the way through so that when you're driving a race car, A, you can't move too far in, a, in an impact of any sort, but also you've got a better feel of the car. And one of the things that came out of the, the Porsche program we did for the RSR was that their drivers all sat on our seat for the first time and they all said it was the best feel they'd ever had of a race car. So that was all about supporting the body from the pelvis all the way up to the shoulder and looking after the head as well. So it just, it meant that they could feel every single movement in the car. Now obviously those seats are, are probably above some people's budget, but we do have another range that, that actually does exactly the same thing geometry wise, but is a, is a whole lot less in money. So um, there's, a, there's a lots of different products on the market, but really first thing is make sure that it's going to give you the safety that you need, so it needs to meet a standard. The other thing to look at is, is just how it fits your body. It has to fit you properly. The harness holes have to be at the right height, the head protection, which you should have if you're building a race car. Um, is important that it's is at the right level of your head so that when you have a side impact it's going to catch it properly. Right, there's a bunch of things you've just mentioned there that I want to sort of go back and, and unpack individually and I think I want to start with just this driver feel because I think that's so often overlooked. People think that a race seat is there for safety and of course as we mentioned yes it is there for safety mm -hmm. but particularly for drivers who may be starting out motorsport driving their daily driven road car with a conventional uh, road car seat and maybe a diagonal and lap belt. Uh, the problem the problem that you maybe don't notice until you actually start driving a car with a properly fitted race seat is that of course when you're turning the car through a corner and you're experiencing lateral g-force uh, you've got nothing to support the body so you're, you're flopping around in the seat and uh, you tend to end up holding yourself up with the steering wheel that makes it very difficult for you to actually feel what the car's doing. So this is where the race seat comes in so it's actually properly supporting you so instead of the uh, being able, being able to be holding yourself up on the steering wheel, you're actually feeling that movement through the seat. So, in terms of that, how important is it to size the seat for the particular driver? Are there different widths of seat that you need to consider? Yeah, there are, and we've looked at obviously over the years we've looked at what size the anatomy of the human being is, and obviously there's a lot of different sizes. So we've we've come up with a. a a sort of formula that works on four sizes of seat for most of our ranges of seats. So um, we have a standard and then we have a wide for, for shorter people who have got big, big butts and then we do a tall for a lot of like Scandinavians are very tall people as our, as our Dutch um, and then we have the wide tall which probably fits a lot of Americans. So. Um, and that, and that formula seems to work. The only issue that with some of the bigger seats, obviously, is some of the cars that people are trying to put them into, they don't fit. So we've got, you know, things like sports cars, Corvettes, etc. It's very difficult to get some of our bigger seats into them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's important that the your body fits into the seat snugly. So when you go and try out a seat, you've just got out of your street car that has got a big flat seat in it, and you're flopping around in it and you sit in a race seat, it will feel tight initially, but it needs to be snug. You, you don't want any movement in the seat at all. You don't want to be in any discomfort, but you need to be snug. Um, and so that's, that's the first really important part, really. Now, along with that as well, the, the seat's only going to be as effective as the mounting. So 
we need to have that seat mounted properly and that can be at odds with being able to also adjust the seat forward and backwards, particularly if you've got different drivers uh, sitting in the car. So what are your options there and how, how do you recommend mounting a race seat? So, I mean obviously there are some people who want to have the adjustability. There are some cars you need the adjustability to be able to get out of the car because obviously with head restraint seats sometimes it closes up that opening quite a bit. Um, I really don't recommend sliders and adjusters in a, in a race car. A, they're heavy, and, and B, any little bit of movement at the bottom, even if it's a fraction of a moment, it transfers to a lot more movement at the top. So you really, if you can choose the drivers that are going to drive the car by the size of their anatomy is a good, good thing. Um, you'll notice in supercars now when they're doing the endurance series, most of the drivers tend to be the same sort of build um, and that, that just makes it that much easier with seat inserts and that's the other way to go, you can always just put a seat insert into the seat. The other thing we sort of see as well is the use of adjustable pedal boxes where the pedal box can actually be slid forwards and backwards and the seat remains fixed. And the next aspect with that which I wanted to get into is, uh, I'm just going to make it really hard to move the seat, is you've also moved into uh, the rear mounted seats as opposed to conventionally they're just bolted to frames on the base of the seat. Rear mounted seats, can you tell us where the advantages with that is? So, so firstly safety, so the, most of the mass in a human body is, is the chest upwards, um, so the theory is to catch that upper body in the seat um, as soon as possible, so therefore very square shoulders on a lot of our ranges of seats. Um, you don't want to transfer all that load down to the brackets at the bottom, you want to transfer that straight to the chassis. And so from a, both from a safety point of view and that feel point of view again, it's crucially important. And we, we were one of the first to actually develop a seat with, um, with back mounting when we did the Dodge Viper back in 2002. Um, and now the FIA have actually mandated that in any new GT3 car from the beginning of this year. So that's, that's obviously helped us get into those um, ranges of race cars, but it's because of all those benefits, both safety and, and feel. The other problem that a lot of those sports cars don't have a strong enough floor. So in a, in a major impact, if you're only mounting it to the floor, then the floors are letting go in a big impact. Now, you also mentioned earlier head restraints, and that's again just all about sort of supporting the, the driver in a side impact. So reasonably self-explanatory, but can you just run us through that system? Okay, so the, obviously the neck is a vital part of the body. The, the head has a helmet on which adds extra weight to it so the, you don't want your head to be able to move over too far. There have been fatalities where um, you know, organs in the neck have actually let go and, and killed people. Um, the, the other one obviously is the frontal head restraint which is a slightly different topic but it's a whole combination of things so you, your whole safety package needs to work together. So the seat is the, is the first crucial part of it and then obviously you need to have a very good harness as well. So. The side head restraint on a seat is really just about catching the head early in a, in a side impact. And I guess, I mean, obviously very dependent on the accident, but uh, some of the numbers we, we hear talked about with a, a very hard side impact uh, is in the range of 30 plus G instantaneously. So that's all of that force acting through the helmet. Again, you've got the mass of the helmet, the mass of the head. So without that head restraint, it's, it's basically impossible for the driver to actually hold their head up and that, that's where the damage can come in. Absolutely no chance of holding your head up in an impact. So the testing we did in, uh, with Chrysler back in 2002, was re we got some great footage of us with, from high speed cameras, um, and what it showed was that you actually, in, a, in an impact, that driver's head will go out, potentially hit the roll cage, and come back in and be at rest within 0.2 of a second. So there's, and the, and the G-forces you mentioned there, we've actually, in motorsport and, and especially in NASCAR, they've been measuring G-force um, and crashes well over 100 G. Um, in fact, up into the 200 in the head. So it's, it's massive and people, if they have the right safety equipment, can walk away. All right, so moving on to some other features that we see with race seats, and one of the key ones here is the material. Obviously this comes down in a big part to your budget, weight versus the, the expense of the seat, and obviously weight is the enemy of, of performance here. So can you talk to us about the different materials, uh, pros and cons of them in, in the race seats? Okay, so the majority of the seats we sell are, are fiberglass based seats. Some of them have other materials in them, but, but basically fiberglass. Um, and then w we have another higher range of seats, obviously, which are made out of Kevlar and, and carbon fibre. So the, the, the rule of thumb is double the price for, ca for carbon and half the weight. So if you're really chasing weight in a race car, it's actually quite, it's quite economical weight to get out of the car, um, especially at serious levels of motorsport. They both meet the same standard. So 
for every range of our seats, we have we have a fiberglass and a carbon version, and all of them meet the same FIA standard, no matter which material it is. So the, the question, some people say is carbon stiffer. No, it's not stiffer. It's just we have to make the fiberglass thicker to get the same strength. So essentially, you're you're just manipulating the amount of material you're using in order to get the same uh, strength out of the product, and that's where the, the weight saving comes in with the carbon. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, hey, look, as I say, probably 80% of the seats we sell to the general market are fiberglass. And the other aspect that we see on some of your seats is uh, vents in the rear. So, talk us through that system. That, that was something that came out of um, actually from suit manufacturers talking to them and talking to um, different people who had been around serious motorsport and endurance racing for a long time. And the and the. We saw it, at, um, we've seen it at Adelaide a lot with supercars um, where the, the cooling system fails and the driver gets overheated. Once your body goes over a, a certain amount above the normal temperature, your brain stops functioning properly. You can't concentrate, you lose lose ability to drive a car. So we thought of something really simple that, that wasn't going to be able to break down. It was just ambient air coming in, using the latent heat of a sweaty body to evaporate, you know, when that evaporates, obviously you're getting a cooling effect. So that was the whole idea of it. And again, a lot of the manufacturers that we're supplying seats to for their serious race teams, especially things like 24 Hours of Le Mans, um, they love it and they actually pump an air conditioner through it so it actually cools the driver. They get out of the car, they don't even look as though they've had a sweat. It's amazing. So in its simplest form there, you run a, a tube from the vent on the rear of the seat to a neck duct on, on a window on the side of the car? Yeah, neck and duct or some other teams put it somewhere else, but it's basically just bringing in fresh air from the outside. And some of them, some of them cool it, like I said with, with Porsche, but some, some don't, they just use ambient air from the outside. All right, David, it's been great to get some insight into the different range of seats that are available. Hopefully that's answered some questions for some of our viewers watching and uh, allowing them to make a more informed decision about where to go when building a race car. If people do want to find out more about the Racetech brand in particular, where can they go? Racetechseats.com. Perfect, thanks a lot. Okay, thank you. If you like that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.